What is up, investors? And welcome back to the Everything Crypto Show. I'm your host, Everything Crypto, here to bring you the latest and most important news moving the crypto markets. Now, as always, please remember that nothing on this channel is financial advice. These videos are for viewer education and entertainment purposes only. So please invest responsibly as I want this community to thrive in the long run. And I love and appreciate you all. And on that note, we have an action packed video to get through today. We got to take a look at some on chain data to show us what has been going on behind the scenes during this sell off. Some serious things to look at from a macro perspective, some allegations against Avalanche Labs that they hired a lawyer to undermine their competition as well as some more vertical integration between crypto.com and the Kronos chain. And we got to wrap it up with some Celsius, FTX, and a Voyager news. So plenty of stuff to get through and there is no time to waste. So without further ado, it is time to sit back, relax, grab that morning cup of joe and enjoy the show. Now, if you've not yet hit that sub and like button, please consider doing so and joining the Everything Crypto Squad as the number one goal of this channel is to bring you all of the news that you need to know on a daily basis to keep you up to speed on what is going on in these wild markets also go ahead and follow us over on twitter we do a bunch of giveaways to give back to this amazing community and with that we are going to start off these crypto market updates like we always do hopping right into the charts but this time we're going to switch it up and take a look at the u.s dollar chart first and we have discussed previously the inverse correlation between the u.s dollar and bitcoin and ethereum and effectively when the dollar is ripping that is a sign that people are flocking to safety which means that bitcoin and ethereum are most likely moving downwards and now it does actually look look like we are well above this resistance at 107 and I did say if we break above that that we are most likely headed back up to 120 here which is dot com bubble levels but it is literally clear skies until that 120 level and I do think that we go there in the coming months which does mean more pain ahead for Bitcoin and Ethereum now today we are actually seeing a little bit of a relief rally but do not be fooled if we actually go ahead and take a look at the weekly we are still pretty much bearish on all technical indicators here so you can see there we are well below that 200 week moving average we are just holding on for dear life above 20,000, which is that 2018 all-time high and if we do break below that then i am expecting a fifteen thousand dollar bitcoin in the coming months and as i do expect bitcoin to break below its 2018 all-time high of twenty thousand, i do think ethereum will follow suit and break below that fourteen hundred dollar level and in that case i think we come right back here at 1257 at the 200 week moving average and we either validate it as a level of support or we come back down to retest these june lows which is definitely also on the table so obviously you guys know long term i am incredibly bullish on crypto but we cannot ignore what is happening right now in the short term which is looking quite bearish and we do actually have some on-chain data to support these claims starting off with the fact that trading volumes have fallen to two year lows for crypto investment products and we have now seen the third straight week of net outflows obviously after a very strong july so we did hit trading volumes of 901 million last week which is substantially lower than the year-to-date weekly average of 2.4 billion and that is the the 2022 average i'm pretty sure we're even much higher on this average in 2021 so under a billion dollars worth in trading volume that is not a lot at all and digital asset investment products also saw net outflows of 27 million last week slightly higher than the 9 million in outflows from the week prior so we are seeing people run away with their cash and that is definitely uh most likely due to the fed taking their hawkish stance in that Jackson Hole speech. I don't know why people were so surprised by this. However, it definitely did catch people off guard as we have now seen 46 million in outflows since the beginning of August. And that is after we actually saw net inflows of 474 million in July. So definitely a very bearish past couple of weeks, but this weekend specifically, it has been ramping up in response to the Fed's meeting, which by the way, in case you guys didn't know, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren is warning that the Federal Reserve may be bring us into a recession so once again we have politicians here trying to save face and pretend that we are not already in a recession as it stands and she does cite issues here like the supply chain disruptions caused from the ongoing russia to ukraine conflict uh doesn't want to talk about the fact that the u.s printed like half of their money supply within one year's time and she also did say here that nothing the fed does is really going to help with the economic slowdown or inflation at the moment and she's not incorrect but the matter of fact is the recession is not coming it is already here it's just a matter of how long is it going to stick around for that is what we do not know yet however there are some other countries around the world who are really in much tighter spots than the u.s believe it or not including the uk who goldman sachs is predicting will enter a recession in q4 and this does come off the back of the news we covered a couple of days ago that uk 
UK energy bills are to rise by 80% in October as regulators do announce hikes. This is absolutely surreal. You can see here that at the current moment, people are paying about uh, 2,000 pounds per month for their household energy, and now they are facing an increase up to 3,600 pounds a month. And that is just the beginning as they are now saying that the cap could rise to 4,600 in the first quarter of 2023 and 5,300 pounds in the second quarter of 2023. So effectively from this $2,000 mark here a year from now or less than a year from now, if you're looking at Q2 of 2023, you are looking at an 150% increase to your energy bills, not even 80% anymore. That is a rapid increase in a very short amount of time. And that is really going to put a ton of strain on the UK, which is already suffering from pretty rampant inflation as it is. And we also got to talk about Europe over here as the Shell CEO is discussing how Europe's energy crisis could last several years. And this does come after France warned today that they may have to ration energy this winter. So France has warned companies they may have to ration as Russia continues to squeeze its supply to Europe, causing record high prices. We took a look at this chart on Friday that pretty much showed German and France energy uh, one year ahead. Futures were up like 29% on one day. They actually did crater by about 29% today, just coming back to where they were last week. But if you look at that chart, it literally looks like the beginning of a meme coin or something like this is energy we are talking about a very common commodity that is absolutely soaring to the upside and the downside as the energy constraints are just so ridiculous right now. And yeah, I do think that this is going to take a while to sort itself out, which is why once again, I am saying that we do need to prepare for a potential prolonged bear market. Do not forget that this is the first recessionary environment that Bitcoin has ever been in. But to be honest, just saying that makes me even more bullish because it just reminds me how early we are to this whole thing. And we actually had some good news here out of Iran that has approved the use of crypto for trading and imports. Now, this actually does follow to serve as a measure to circumvent U.S. sanctions imposed on its finance and banking sector. And according to Amin, the regulations for using cryptos instead of dollar and euro were finalized by their administration on Sunday. So this is definitely a very bullish piece of news coming out of, out of Iran over here. And I definitely think it does show you the value proposition of Bitcoin, of having a global reserve asset that is immune to US sanctions that are being imposed on other finance and banking sectors. This is the power of Bitcoin. We have now seen Iran adopt it. And I honestly would expect more countries moving forward to adopt crypto as an actual method of transferring value for trading and imports. I think it makes a ton of sense. And I am always more bullish on Bitcoin than I am on fiat. So the fact that whole countries are getting behind this movement is definitely a good sign indeed. I do also want to talk about the Bitcoin miners here as we have been really covering them the past couple of days, really how they've just been getting squeezed in two different directions. The first one is the rising energy costs, and the second one is the fact that it is less profitable for them to actually mine Bitcoin because its US dollar value has gone down. So miners are getting absolutely squeezed left, right, and center with rising energy, with lowering Bitcoin prices, and they're saying here now that the end of the Texas Bitcoin mining gold rush may have finally come. So we know that Texas has been a very, very hot spot for Bitcoin mining. However, it does look like this may come to an end as really the least uh, efficient miners are really just getting absolutely stomped out of the business and only those with the most efficient mining and rigs are able to, are able to even be somewhat profitable on their Bitcoin mining. Honestly, this is no different than any other business in my opinion. The most efficient are the ones that are going to survive and the less efficient ones who do have outdated equipment are not going to make it. That is why some of them have also resorted to selling their Bitcoin and their mining equipment. You even saw Riot Blockchain here actually earning 9.5 million in energy credits for curtailing its consumption in July. So opting to actually stop their operations and not mine Bitcoin and instead receive 9.5 million in energy credits. Now, is this a concern in terms of the US mining operation? This could be a concern, but in terms of Bitcoin mining in general, I do not see this as a concern whatsoever. In fact, you guys may remember that last year there was a whole bunch of FUD when China actually 
banned Bitcoin mining. And guess what happened? They all moved to the United States. So now if these miners get squeezed out of the, out of the United States, they're going to go somewhere more energy efficient. So in my opinion, this is just more of a temporary setback and not something that actually will have a long lasting negative impact on Bitcoin. But in the short term, this will create more selling pressure. So once again, something to keep in mind. Now, we also got some news here from Meta's official website. I hate calling them Meta. I wish we could just keep calling them Facebook. And they have actually introduced digital collectibles to showcase NFTs on Facebook and Instagram. So they will roll out this testing of digital collectibles with select U.S. creators and collectors to share NFTs that you have created or bought. The feature includes connecting your digital wallet, sharing your digital collectibles, and automatically tagging the creator and the collector. There will be no sort of gas fees associated with posting or sharing a digital collectible on Instagram. As of right now, they are supporting a Ethereum, Polygon, and Flow. And you can kind of see here what the look of this actually is. Now, I don't really know if this is something, first of all, I mean, I don't really participate in like showing off my NFTs on social media. But even if I did, I don't know if I would really want to link my NFTs to Facebook or Instagram. Like, I'm not sure if that's something I would participate in, but a lot of people will participate in this. And we know that like over a third of the world's population is on Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp. So this vertical integration of actually getting nfts on their platform i don't really see it as very bullish for facebook i see it more bullish for the crypto space and the nft space as a whole as it could potentially get a ton more people interested in this sector of the blockchain and the sad thing is is that we could probably get like a trillion new people onboarded to crypto through facebook and instagram and they would probably still know more about the blockchain than the sec and uh, the SEC definitely deserve that shot because once again, they are inquiring about three different altcoins that Grayscale Investment Products is invested in. So three more altcoins have now made it onto the SEC's hit list, and that is Zcash, that is Stellar Lumens, XLM, and Horizon. So Grayscale did acknowledge that, ESA, sorry, that each asset may be defined as a security based on current laws, and they did actually reach out to the SEC in June, and the SEC made it no mention of any guidelines on whether the trust assets are securities or not and you know why they didn't because they don't have any guidelines on whether they are securities or not the sec is ruling by regulation through enforcement and not through guidelines or regulatory framework they literally named nine altcoins a security just so they could go ahead and nail those guys at coinbase for insider security trading so clearly they do not have any sort of guideline here and just be warned that if you are invested in zcash xlm or horizon that they are now on the SEC's hit list. Now, we got to talk about this very, very interesting story from Avalanche. We're going to take a little bit of time to really break this down because Avalanche is effectively being uh, accused here of trying to hurt competitors and distract regulators from his actions by going after the competition. So this is very interesting indeed. They kind of give a whole breakdown on, a on Ava Labs over here. And then on Roach Friedman, this is a law firm that widely sues people in crypto. They are currently suing suing Binance, um, they're suing Ava Labs competitor Solano Labs, Definity, and uh, which is actually an ICP contributor, and it is led by Kyle Roche. Now, what this article by Crypto Leaks is stating is they can reveal that the PAC directs Roach Friedman and their leader Kyle Roach to use the American legal system, quote unquote, gangster style to attack and harm crypto organizations and projects that might compete with Ava Labs or Avalanche. To, to sue crypto industry actors generally with the aim of creating magnets for regulators such as the SEC and CFTC that distract them from the highly commercial nature of Ava Labs and the Avalanche blockchain and three secretly pursue the CEO's personal vendettas against individuals. In exchange for this, he was given about a percentage point of ownership in Ava Labs stock as well as AVAX. So this is what is being reported here and what we effectively see are a ton of clips. Now I did watch like a bunch of these clips and really they are all broken up into about 10 to like some of them are 50 seconds 30 seconds but i'm just going to say right off the bat the fact that these are all broken up into different clips and not just put in a full video is already incredibly suspicious it kind of seems to me like they were really like chopping and editing these clips to make them potentially sound more sinister than they truly are and based on what i found in this article there is absolutely zero proof that any of this is true some of the things that were said in these clips did definitely sound a little bit suspicious and malicious but obviously you have to be important when you're analyzing the, these new sites and it really sounds like this is exactly what the uh, authors of this article was looking for 
Now, there was a little bit of fishy action here from the Avalanche CEO, where basically he was like tweeting um, at Roche Friedman, basically saying, oh, here it is right here. So this is a monumental lawsuit against Tether-based manipulation of cryptocurrency prices. The law firm behind this lawsuit is absolutely top-notch, and this is him basically tweeting it at Kyle Roach. So there is definitely a connection between the two, but the matter of fact is neither Kyle Roach nor the Avalanche CEO has actually denied a connection between the two. They did actually verify that our uh, roach here does have a one percent stake in ava labs as well as the avalanche token itself but they said that was for actual legal proceedings and not paying him to go ahead and undermine the competition so it's not a question of whether or not our uh, roach does have some sort of a stake in ava labs and avalanche it's more of a question of what was this uh this money given to him for was it allocated for legal proceedings or was it allocated for these shady practices so at the moment avalanche has been going down with the rest of the crypto market this news has not really seemed to make too big of, a, of an impact yet but i will be curious to see how this unfolds i'm just saying that at the moment i think avalanche has a ton of tier one partnerships set up i don't think it makes much sense for them to really do this and try and undermine the competition when they are one of the strongest out there but time will tell. At the moment, though, I am not concerned with this, but I will be keeping an eye on it. Now, moving on into some stuff with Crypto.com and the new Kronos NFT platform, Minted. So Minted is the first NFT platform on Kronos to support multi-chain functionality from launch. They actually reward supporters of the platform for participating in the ecosystem with its own native token, Minted. And this allows users to browse and purchase from a library of more than 10 million NFTs across the ETH and Kronos blockchain now minted here has a very clean look and what you're going to notice on minted is that the loaded lions are already available on minted now they are also available on crypto.com's nft platform and that is because it has actually been announced that there is now vertical integration between crypto.com nft and minted so every nft collection launched on crypto.com and minted on chronos will also be available for secondary trading on minted in my opinion this is incredibly boring bullish and it makes a very big push to get the new user the average user into the chronos verse and the reason being is quite simple we are expecting a lot of these chronos nfts to have some sort of metaverse application and now people can buy from crypto.com nft they don't have to go through DeFi. they don't have to use their crow to buy their nfts they can simply go on crypto.com nft and buy their very own nft through the platform and it will be automatically connected to the secondary market on minted which can then get them into the Kronos chain, which will then expose them to a ton of these GameFi applications that are coming up. And one, I mean, really the main one that I'm excited here for is the Loaded Lions. I am still waiting for this Metaverse game to come out. That is something I cannot wait for, and I have actually put cash aside, uh, hopefully for that land drop whenever it comes. But based on the fact that they did announce a land drop, I definitely think they are gearing it up to become a serious competitor to the Board Ape Yacht Club's other side. And I definitely think the crypto.com team can do it now this is shane here obviously his opinion is biased as he works on the loaded lions team but he does say that the Loaded Lions are one of the top NFT projects in the world and they are only just getting started building on the foundation that has been created. The project is held to a very high standard being backed by Crypto.com and rightfully so. And that's really the main thing here is they are run by the Crypto.com team. This is Crypto.com's NFT project. That is what makes it so unique. And as Crypto.com does continue to expand and really work for that brand awareness to become the number one crypto exchange on a global scale, I think this will only benefit the Lions if they can really make the Loaded Lions synonymous with Crypto.com and with the upcoming Kronos verse. So definitely, I think there is tons planned for the future of this project, and I don't think that the Crypto.com team will disappoint, even though people like to give them slack sometimes. Now, speaking of teams here, we got to talk about the Cardano team, more specifically the creator Charles Hoskinson giving an update on the big Vasile hard, hard fork revealing a new timeline. So what he basically says here is that the developers are making steady progress and that the hard fork should go through at some point in September. And this could actually lead to a very interesting scenario here where we have the ETH 2.0 merge come in September. We also have the Cardano merge come in September. And honestly, none of it matters because of the macro environment. 
And that's something that we have really been emphasizing on this channel is the importance of the macro versus the micro. And the matter of fact is, is that regardless of how bullish the micro looks with the macro environment that we were in right now, nobody cares. Nobody cares about the E2.0 merge. Nobody cares about the Cardano hard fork. People are worried about keeping their cash, about preserving their assets. And when that is the case, it doesn't matter what's going on in the crypto space. Now, personally, I am not a, a Cardano bull by any means. I'm not personally invested in the project. I do think that there are some other layer ones that do have a better value proposition. That is just my opinion though. I understand there are a lot of Cardano fans out there and if you are a Cardano fan, then uh, yeah, just so you know, the Vasil hard fork is potentially coming soon. Now, we got to wrap things up here talking about a couple of centralized exchanges. The first one here being FTX. They have denied any plans to acquire Huobi. Now, we have been keeping a very close eye on Sam Bankman Freed, or like we like to call him Bankman Freed, because that is exactly what he is a man of the banks. He has been making a ton of moves in this bear market, trying to acquire as many crypto exchanges as he can, really pushing for regulation so he can have FTX as the number one crypto exchange. That is his plan over here however he did actually deny today any rumors that he was planning to acquire huobi which is another centralized exchange so that's pretty weird i honestly thought that he would have been interested in huobi as his whole strategy in this bear market has pretty much just been acquiring these other exchanges on the cheap but he did in fact deny that rumor today and honestly as somebody who does believe that crypto.com will become the number one exchange this is good news because the more ftx continues to expand and just eat up these other exchanges changes obviously the more of their customers they do end up acquiring and in my opinion at the moment it is pretty much a rat race between binance crypto.com and ftx and and majority of the other ones have pretty much fallen out of the race and there are two that are just completely out of the race and down for the count in my opinion and that is both voyager and celsius now we got to give you guys very important updates on both of these exchanges they have both been insolvent for well over a month now and we have been keeping a very close eye on on what exactly has been going on there have been some takeover rumors there have been some deadlines announced some very interesting things that we do need to talk about and starting off with the voyager here their native token vgx actually skyrocketed over 125 percent a couple of days back over these takeover rumors so it is being rumored that voyager is actually in talks to be acquired now coinbase was initially a part of these rumors however apparently they did back out and now two major exchanges are on the table one being Binance and one being none other than FTX that we did just cover. So I definitely think at this point, it does look likely that Voyager does get acquired. In fact, I think that may be the optimal solution to actually get these customers their money back. Personally, after what has happened, I do not put any faith in the Voyager or the Celsius team to put their users first and give them their money back. It seems like they are more concerned with trying to stay afloat and compensate their employees and not putting their customers first, which they should really be doing after having locked their funds at this point for I believe almost like two months so definitely very interesting that Binance and FTX are in talks to potentially acquire Voyager I would like to see crypto.com step in here and potentially make a bid however if you have been watching the channel you may remember that they have actually been focusing on their acquisitions elsewhere they recently acquired two companies in South Korea that actually granted them the operation licenses and regulatory approval to operate there so it looks like crypto.com is really focusing on that global expansion and then we have Binance and FTX looking to actually acquire these uh, US exchanges that really do look like they are either going to go under or just be bought out and at this point I don't care what happens I just really want everybody to get their money back that they are rightfully owed and I do think that could potentially happen a lot quicker if they were just to get bought out as opposed to trying to stay afloat as independent exchanges. And that's what I'm most concerned about at the moment. It would appear that the general public does agree this would be much better for all of their customers, given that VGX pump that we did see off the news. Now, in other news here, we got to wrap this up with Celsius and the U.S. trustees are requesting an independent examiner on Celsius. I think it is more than enough time that they finally do this to finally untangle their financial 
financial, uh, really just their financial holes in the balance sheet. As we know, I talked a couple days back how Celsius claimed to have $1.2 billion, uh, $1 billion hole in their balance sheet, which the other day was actually discovered to be something more to the tune of about $2.8 billion. And that actually has to do with Celsius themselves misrepresenting the value of their very own sell token on their balance sheet. So clearly, even leading up to the bankruptcy, Celsius had a lot of shady practices. Now, even in bankruptcy, they can't seem to be honest with the community and just fess up as to how much debt they really uh, have, how much debt they really need to cover to get themselves out of this hole. And the fact that they did actually resort to their Bitcoin mining operation, saying that these mining operations are going to help them pay off their balance sheet, I think also really speaks as sort of like a desperate move on their part, because we have been covering over the past couple of days that Bitcoin mining is not very profitable at the moment. So even that really seems like a last ditch effort that will not work out. But I am very curious to see what the US trustees are able to actually find through an independent examination of Celsius. And hopefully the truth really does finally come to light. Once again, just like Voyager, I think Celsius is in a much uh, tougher position than Voyager as they have really done a lot more to lose the trust of the community. Their CEO has definitely been caught in some shady practices. We talked about how he pretty much took control of all the Bitcoin for Celsius users and tried to trade around the Fed meeting minutes back in January. And then he bought it all uh, like a day later back at a loss. I think they had over 100,000 Bitcoin at one point and now they have under 40,000 left. So just just real like mismanagement over here on Celsius's part. I do think we need an independent examiner in there to really give some clarification on their financial situation. And once again, I am just most concerned with everybody getting their money back that they are rightfully owed. So I do plan to keep you guys in the loop on what is going on as these situations continue to unfold. And on that note, I hope you guys did enjoy the content in today's video. Once again, if you did make it to the end, you are an absolute champion. And let me know in the comments down below if you did make it all the way to the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope to catch you in the next one and peace out for now.